most of the stuff that I create is pretty personal to me in the sense of like I'm creating it because I'm choosing it and um, and then sometimes I create things that I've I've gotten really good at and it's really easy for me but this particular one is intent is it's been sort of intense for me it's taken me much longer to put it together and get it out in the world because it's really relevant to me right now especially over the four years that I've been doing access consciousness um, I've gotten more and more aware of how separate that I've kept myself from my body and you know pre-access consciousness it was that separation showed up and really like you know beating a dead horse in the sense of my body it's like I just made it do whatever it is I wanted to do but not because awareness but because end result you know I was really interested in the end result of looking fit and thin and attractive and you know I had all these end results in mind and so I did that I got really good at it I, in fact I was going to go to school for being a nutritionist hi Eva um, when I found Access Consciousness and somebody asked me some questions about nutrition school. And um, so I have a lot, I have a lot of varied experience here. <laughs> it's very interesting. Um, I've got nutrition experience, I have supplement experience, I've got essential oils experience, I've got, you know, I was a vegetarian for a long time, I've done, I've totally revamped my family's diet into clean eating and all this stuff. So I have lots of experience. And I also have lots of experience when it comes to radically changing the shape of your body and, and stuff like that. So that's pre-access consciousness. And then access consciousness, basically what I did is I threw all of that skill set out the window and um, really went to doing whatever I wanted to do. And really, I think used more the, your body can, I think used the tools more as an excuse to just eat whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted. And so, and and that's one facet of it. Um, I'm going to go out of order here. So to bring it back to today, what I'm aware of today is that my body really does like to be more spacious. And when it's being fully itself, when I'm not inflicting food on it or when I'm not choosing from a point of view, it really doesn't eat that much. It likes to move and um, would love to is would just naturally get smaller. Like that's just how it would work. And... Um, so I'm desiring right now to give myself the challenge of really listening. It's very, very, I've, I'm very good at, I'm very good at the muscle of conclusion. <laughs> I'm very good at ignoring what my body's saying and just functioning from a point of view that whatever's in front of me is so delicious, I'm going to keep eating it. Um, the point of view that I have to keep eating because um, it's what we do. I don't even know like there's that you bought this food you purchased this it costs this much money and therefore you need to eat it you know so I'm really I'm excellent at functioning from point of view the muscle that I'm that I'm that I've strengthened some that I really want to strengthen is going hey body do you want to have any more of this food even though we paid however much money for it there does seem to be a trigger between money and eating it um, and also just choosing to move choosing choosing instead of basing what I do with my body on feelings, actually choosing and seeing what that creates. You know, I talk to a lot of people that that talk about once they started doing access, you know, they gained a lot of weight or they started doing access and they dropped a lot of weight or their bodies have, have changed in one direction or another. And so I get this as an ongoing conversation. And, um, you know, a lot of us are interested in creating, creating change. And, and how do you do that? And of course, there's no linear how. But one of the things I wanted to give you today that um, I'm going to be giving my group in a much more, um, a longer loop is a few clearings. 